Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Tough Coffee Shop Talk. I am your host, Rhonda Lavoie. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss another episode. Each week, I meet with the members from Tough Collaborative to chat about varying topics. And each week, you can join me here as I review the topic of the week. We have a wide range of topics discussing anything from business building techniques to personal development ideas. And the best part is, I feel these topics can touch anybody, no matter what their adventure is in life. If you're self-employed, entrepreneur, working in a corporation, stay-at-home parent, retired, or even in between jobs, I think there's just a little bit for everyone. So I'd like to dive right in. Let's get to this week's conversation of the week. This week we talked about uh, visualization meditation, which is a bit of a mouthful. But anybody who's maybe been following along on the podcast or knows me personally knows that I have a very specific morning routine that I do. And a part of my routine, I have two different types of meditation. And I don't say this lightly because meditation is not easy. And I know lots of people roll their eyes at meditation and think it's very woo woo. Um, But it has really, really made an impact on my life. And like I said, it does not come easy to me. I have many, many, many squirrels in my brain that I have to battle when I try and meditate, but I continue to practice it. And it is practicing uh, because I really have seen the impact. And I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about that and just give you my experience in hopes that it'll make an impact for you to encourage you to maybe give it a try and just embrace the woo woo for even just a little while. So in my morning routine, uh, I do a meditation, which is there to calm me, um, clear my mind as best as possible. When I do that meditation, I of course focus on my breathing, think about all my senses and just try and clear my mind to um, start the day off peacefully, I guess is probably the best way to put it. And like I said, many squirrels come in when I'm trying to do this. And one of the things, and I'll just give you a little tip here that's not related to today's topic, but one of the tools that I've used to help me uh, combat those squirrels is as things come into my mind, like often it'll be, oh, don't forget to do this, or shoot, I should have done that, or... Um, you know, this is a really good idea for something. As those come in, I just quickly open my eyes and jot them down on a notebook that I have beside me because then that idea or that thought stops coming in because I've written it down. So that's just a tip if you're trying to do uh, meditation. And it seems to work well for me. Not only do I get that information out um, so that I can ensure it's not lost, but it gives me, um, it gets me back to focusing faster. But the the second meditation that I do is visualization meditation. Um, And it is there to enhance that focus and clarity and really um, get you to a creativity and a problem solving place, which can be super beneficial. So I just have some information to share with you here. Uh, So it has enhanced, it is enhancing focus and clarity clarity. Visualization meditation helps sharpen focus by training the mind to picture detailed images or scenarios. This practice enhances mental clarity and enables individuals to concentrate more effectively on tasks in their daily life. By regularly engaging in visualization meditation, practitioners can improve their ability to hold their concentration for longer periods. Um... We've talked about this previously, but boredom is something that we don't allow ourselves to have. We, we busy our brains, our, our minds, our, what we look at so much that we don't allow boredom to come in. And that's a bit of a mistake uh, because boredom, having nothing distracting you, which is boredom, allows you to bring in new ideas and be creative and think out of the box because you aren't distracted by all of these other things. 
And by allowing that to happen, so I'm not saying that meditating is boring, <laughs> just saying that it's similar in that you're allowing your brain to open up to all possibilities, which will help you concentrate better because you're not allowing all those distractions in. Uh, it's stress reduction and relaxation. Visual visualization meditation often involves Im imagining peaceful and calming scenarios, which can significantly reduce stress and promote relaxation by mentally transporting oneself to a serene environment, such as a forest or a beach. Individuals can lower their heart rate and decrease anxiety. This technique also aids in cultivating a sense of inner peace and well-being. Well, who doesn't want a little bit more inner peace and well-being, honestly? Goal setting and achievement is another piece that comes into play. Um, this type of meditation is a powerful technique for setting and achieving goals. By vividly imagining the successful attainment of a goal, in individuals reinforce their commitment to it and enhance their motivation. This mental rehearsal can help in identifying steps needed to achieve goals and build confidence by envisioning overcoming obstacles. This technique also allows individuals to visualize positive interactions and outcomes, which can help alter negative thought patterns and improve emotional resilience. By rehearsing positive emotions and responses, individuals can cultivate a more optimistic outlook and enhance their emotional regulation. And lastly, and this is the one that I really want to speak on today is visualization meditation stimulates the imagination, which can enhance creativity and improve problem solving skills. By picturing various scenarios and outcomes, individuals can explore new possibilities and innovative solutions to challenges. The, this practice encourages out of the box thinking, which is valuable in both personal and professional contexts. So having said all that, <clears throat> the, the story that I want to tell you, and I've actually believe I've told it before on the podcast is about when I was using visualization meditation before I spoke at EXP con in Vancouver. For you listening who don't know, I'm a real estate agent um, and I work for the brokerage EXP and every year they have uh, two EXP cons, well actually three EXP cons. Uh, one in the U.S., one in Canada, and one internationally. And I was asked to speak at the one in Canada in Vancouver uh, last fall. And it really excited me and kind of terrified me at the same time, because of course I'm going to be sitting in front of a room full of my peers, all of whom I have you know, huge respect for, which can be incredibly intimidating. So I use visualization meditation to try and envision you know, what that experience would be like. And when you do that visualization, you play through the different scenarios and it literally can be the, you know, I walk on stage and I fall on my face scenario because you, you do, you get anxiety about the things that are going to happen. And when you do this visualization technique, you actually play through those scenarios and make sense of what's you know, likely and what's not likely. Like it's very unlikely that I'm going to fall flat on my face on the, on the stage. And by playing that out ahead of time, that no longer comes into my mind when I'm actually at the event and uh, ready to go on stage. Cause I've gotten over that anxiety. It also helps you play out, you know, what will you say? What will that feel like? You know, how will you ensure that you make this the best possible experience? And I need to tell you by doing this visualization for the weeks leading up to the EXP con, the day of was incredible. My actual experience was incredible. And I was so prepared and calm and excited that it just felt amazing. I was standing backstage and it was a super cool experience to get to have the whole like Britney Spears mic attached to your head, taped to your body. Um, you know, I was backstage with three of the other speakers and the moderator. And it was really interesting to watch the other speakers in their different state of anxiety waiting to make this happen. You know, there's one guy in the corner just sweating profusely. There's another guy like 
bouncing up and down in the corner because his energy level is so high and he was just so anxious about what was going to happen. And another one was just verbal diarrhea in a very inappropriate way. All of their anxieties right out there in front of them because they just weren't mentally prepared for the event. They all did fine. Don't get me wrong. But I believe that my experience was exceptional because I had done this work ahead of time. And because I had done that work ahead of time, all those anxious thoughts didn't come in so I could really embrace and experience the experience. It was amazing. And I got off this stage and I was just, you know, on cloud nine and extremely happy with how the whole event went. Ever since then, that proof of visualization meditation working has proved to me that I should do that more, you know, that I can use this as a tool to ensure other experiences that I have go just as well. So currently, um, many of you probably know, I am hosting an EXP regional rally, which means I'm, it's kind of like a mini EXP con where we bring in all the agents from across the province and even in Alberta and Manitoba, and we bring in speakers and we have a panel and we have, um, recognition for agents as a bit of a rally. And it's just a very high energy day, uh, that we plan to celebrate all of our accomplishments and learn together and network and, you know, foster those relationships. And I have, um, been organizing that for a little while and it's coming up on November 13th. Sorry, I apologize. November 12th. Um, and I have been using this technique to visualize what the day is going to be like. And that helps me work through the things that I may be forgetting or I need to consider like, you know, you, you sit and you visualize it's like, okay, what is it like when everybody arrives? So what are the things that I need there to ensure that that is, exactly how I want it to be. You know, maybe it needs to be signs or maybe it needs to be banners or maybe it needs to be greeters, you know, working through all of those different things. And then, you know, when we're introducing the guests, you know, what does that look like? Who's the MC and what kind of energy do they need to have? What does the end of the day look like? And then, you know, even down to the cleanup, well, what are the things that I need to consider? What is the day uh, ending going to, to look like so that I can ensure I have the right people in the room? having all of those tools and just clearing my mind to allow those thoughts to come in and they do come in will ensure that I can make that event as best as possible. I also use this, uh, I'm currently running for school board trustee in the Prairie Spirit School Division. I also use this meditation for that. So it's my meditation time is kind of heavy these days because I do have a lot of things going on because uh, the school board trustee election is actually the November 13th. So I have these events kind of back to back, uh, but I just thrive on being not necessarily busy, but having a lot of activity and a lot of things to focus on. It just makes me actually focus even better. But anyway, um, so I'm using that to think through, okay, so how can I, what, what does my campaign look like? How am I going to reach the people and tell them, you know, what I'm about in hopes to win their vote? How am I going to encourage people to vote? Thinking through all of those things and taking that time to do that visualization will just clear some of those barriers that would be there if I didn't take the time to do those things. So when you're doing um, this visualization meditation, it is important to find a quiet space uh, so that you won't be interrupted. It's very hard to meditate if you've got your three-year-old coming up to you and asking for things or the dog's barking to go out or you're sitting in an office, whatever that might be. Just, just find a space that can be a little bit quiet. I do it in my office. I do it first thing in the morning because I know I won't have those disruptions. My phone won't ring. My family's still in bed. And it just makes it easy that I can set that up. And then you begin with just doing some deep breathing to center yourself. Inhale slowly through your nose. Hold. Exhale through your mouth. And that just centers you a little bit, grounds it a little bit. And then you set the scene, visualize a peaceful and inspiring place, something that feels safe um, to just kind of create that calm, engage all your senses. So, you know, how does the, the place smell? What does it sound like? What are the textures that you can feel? What are you seeing in front of you? 
And then you're going to engage the problem that you're wanting to solve or the event that you're wanting to review. So you just bring to mind that situation and imagine it. And then you allow um, things to come in. So for me, when I'm visualizing, you know, what the event is going to look like, then I allow the things to come in, uh, say a scenario that'll play out. It's like, oh, this person shows up and they forgot their invitation. What am I going to do? That's a scenario that could come in and just allow that to all to happen and do that without judgment. Just allow it. Don't worry about why it's happening. Don't freak out that, you know, you're thinking these maybe negative thoughts because even the negative thoughts are important. So just allow them to come in without any judgment and know that they'll come in from multiple angles within your mind. And then allow your mind to wander to get inspiration on what you could do to solve these problems and relax with it and just just let it happen and it will help you devo- um, develop those solutions they'll just those ideas and whatnot will just come in and play out in your mind and once you've played them well enough you ultimately move on to the next scenario or the next piece of the puzzle and continue to solve in that manner once you're done uh your visualization You'll just take a a couple minutes to make some notes um, to reflect on it so that if there is action items that came out of it that you want to address, you'll make some notes. You can also make notes on how it all made you feel so that you can sit with that a little bit to make sure that you're getting the feel that you're looking for. And please know that this whole exercise can be about five minutes. It's not a huge commitment. Um... The hardest part is actually making yourself do it because once you've done it, uh, it can be um, very satisfying. And it again, it's it can be five minutes. It doesn't have to really take terribly long. And commit to doing it regularly because you're not going to solve all the problems in one five minute meditation. It's just not possible because of course your scenario might be um, complicated, right? You, there might be multiple things that need to be solved within that scenario. So commit to doing it regularly, you know, a few days a week or every other day, whatever that looks like. For me, I do it, um, every day, weekdays, uh, weekends are a little bit harder for me and I've allowed myself to not do it on the weekends. I, I sometimes do, but I've allowed myself to not have to have that commitment. Um, so that I don't stress about it, that it's okay. Uh, And I do it first thing in the mornings. And like I said earlier, it really has made a difference for me. I really see how it works. uh, And I really enjoy the outcome when I do the work up front, because that's really what it is. This meditation, I'm doing the work in advance so that the outcome could be the best possible, which is incredibly uh, satisfying and totally worth it. So that, uh, that concludes the episode this week. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe or hit that follow button as I'd love if you come back week to week. Uh, and if you are looking for more information on the membership, check out toughinstitute.com, which is T-U-F institute.com. Or if you want more information on me and my real estate business, uh, check out uh, the urban farmhouse saskatoon.com. And if you're looking for my socials, uh, I'm on Instagram at Rhonda Lavoy underscore T-U-F and on Facebook at Rhonda Lavoy dash the urban farmhouse and EXP Realty. Reach out anytime. I really do love hearing from you. And I really hope you all have a marvelous day and I can't wait to bring you an episode again next week.